this project in particular was thinking about you know, robots that have natural human-like behaviors. And so you know, one reason to do that is that we think that robots that have uh, that meet people's social expectations in terms of their natural behavior would be easier for people to understand and understand how to approach and, and understand how to interact with. Okay, so for this particular motion, you're going to see the robot pick up a box, and there's no context, there's no box, obviously. Um, but one of the things that people responded more favorably to the human-like motion was that it, you can fill in some of the details that are missing in the original motion, um, with the human-like motion, uh, simply because that's one of the things that our algorithm buys you. When the motion was more human-like, um, human beings were able to watch the motion and perceive what the robot was doing more easily. They were able to recognize and label the motion more accurately. For the field of human-robot interaction, what's really interesting about this is that um, typically we, so we don't have a lot of metrics or quantitative things to say that one particular robot motion is more or less human-like than another. Um, it's, it's typically been just judgment calls. So you can get a group of people to watch your robot uh, behave in different ways and say, oh yeah, we liked that one better than that one. And so what this does is it gives you a quantitative metric rather than relying on people giving you um, their, ju uh, their, ju their judgment. And, and so then you can use that. Additionally, now that you have a quantitative metric, you can use that for optimizing behavior. So you can use that for generating lifelike behavior rather than just uh, evaluating lifelike behavior.